I want to go now back to the program with Merle Evers Williams at the podium. Same spot. We felt, in the words of another Mississippian, Fannie Lou Hamer, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I do believe that that is what the crowd some 50 years ago was saying to all of our leaders. Dr. King took the helm and under his leadership and under those who gave their lives such as Medgar Evers and so many others said enough is enough America. This is our country. All of us, we belong here. And here we are some 50 years later, assessing what has happened over this period of time, where we are and what we must do. For a brief period of time, I think we fell asleep and we said, we have moved forward and everything is okay. But we know today that everything is not okay, that there has been a retrenchment in this country as far as civil rights and equal rights is concerned. We marched, we sat, the triumphs and even defeats belong to us all. Dr. King told us that he might not get to the mountaintop with us, but he said that there is a promised land, and America is that promised land for all of us. We are bonded by deep roots of individuals that inevitably become a strong group to be reckoned with, and our strength is in our numbers. In today's world, there's emphasis on individuality. How can I reach my top? I'm sure that no matter how strong any one person may be, they may be strengthened with strong support from each other, encouragement and guidance for those of us who have walked their path. The movement can no longer afford an individual approach to justice. Ours is an interconnected struggle. Black, white, male, female, young, old, everyone, we are all entitled to and protected by this country that we call home. And at times it is necessary that we let those who represent us on Capitol Hill, those who represent us in our communities, know that we are a force to be reckoned with. Many of our messages today target today's youth and our elders. And I look specifically at those in the middle, our new parents, our young professionals, youthful educators, and community activists. They are young enough to relate, but also established in our community and I ask you, how will we bridge that gap? What are our next steps? Because this country in the area of civil rights has certainly taken a turn backward. Am I depressed? No. I am energized to move forward and to be sure to see that the gains that we have encountered and had come to us that we have worked so hard for are not lost. So I do ask you, what are our next steps? We created a framework, but there is still so much work left to be done. Many of our civil rights leaders, including my husband and Dr. Martin Luther King, were still of an age when they took the lead. With that question in mind, I challenge you to get back to community building. It is your problem. It is our problem. It is our neighborhood. These are our children. You are the parents.
but in that same breath, the victory will be a collective one. It is with a clear conscience, knowing what we've done and can do, that we will reach that mountaintop and we will overcome. But it will take each and every one of us in unity, in unison, letting those who say that they manage this country of America know that it's the people, it's the voice and the actions of the people that say we must overcome and will eventually say we have overcome because of the involvement of each and every one. That is our challenge today. Let us move forth and do what we must do, remembering freedom is not free. We must work for it. Poignant last word, Merle Evers Williams, of course, her first husband, coexistence uh, Medgar Evers, uh, was killed in their front yard in 1963 as he was coming coming back. He was a field secretary for the NAACP. In Mississippi. In Mississippi. And she, she said, we are a force to be reckoned with. And she has been a force to be reckoned with uh, low these 50 years. Um, but, you know, she was supposed to, in that program that Jim showed us earlier that President uh, Obama has in his office, her name is on it. She was supposed to have uh, said, uh, a word of recognition of, of Negro women, as they were called, um, and she didn't make it to the march. Uh, so this is this is her first opportunity to be there on the mall and making this kind of statement. So it was certainly 50 years in the <laughs> making, and of course herself a former chairwoman of the NAACP, working tirelessly, and of course now making that call for collectivism, for community building, and for a, a, for a pullback from individualism. Yes, community, community building. These, this is our neighborhood, these are our children.